Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This is Ava. I'm so happy to be here with you today. I'm going to share with you a recipe that is true, tried and tested. This recipe has been around for a long, long time. It belongs to Lou Corona, the originator of this recipe. I will never take claim for something that's not mine. However, I do my own version and so I wanted to share that with you. I have been drinking quite a lot of this Gorilla Milk. That's the recipe I'm going to share with you. This recipe, I find it, I find that it's so important to, to once you've done the detoxing part of, in this lifestyle, you know, people focus so much on the detoxing and we all do the colon cleansing and the water fasting, which I've done just a little bit. And we do the juice fasting, which I have done quite a lot of. And we do the, you know, the blessed herbs and we do all the things. And blessed herbs, by the way, is no longer in business. What a shame. It was a fabulous, fabulous cleanse. Um, but anyway, I've done a lot of that and I have focused over the years on my detox because I, I really believe that I mean, the detox is going to happen no matter what because I'm eating 100% raw food, but I also believed at the beginning that it, it is important to get a lot of the gunk out, and I did get a lot, quite a lot of mucoid plaque out. Back in the day, I have videos on that where I share my mucoid plaque. It was like... It was like uh, it was like the serpent, you know, the serpent that they talk about, and it was quite striking what came out of me. And so I've done quite a lot of detoxing, and I'm well established in the lifestyle. It's been about five years, and I'm doing great, and I love it, and I'm thriving. It hasn't been without its challenges for sure. But the reason I like this recipe and has been brought to my attention in recent months that it is important to also focus a little bit on the rebuilding phase and. I have been rebuilding for quite some time. I do eat a little bit more fat than most. I don't worry about the the macros. I just eat and I'm very intuitive about the way I eat. I don't eat as much fruit as some other raw foodies and so I do my own thing. But lately I have been really inspired by Luca Rona and that he is someone I have been followed over the years and I have done a lot of his recipes before but lately because I have been working out more and I have been trying to pull out from you know during COVID I wasn't so diligent about exercising I certainly skipped quite a few days going to the gym I was <clears throat> I must admit I did the bare bones and I and I've gone out of shape and that's the reality of it. I need to build my muscle back again and so I'm doing that. I'm going to the gym and I'm building muscle once again. But one of the reasons I love this recipe is because it, it, it is very muscle building, especially if you add the essential amino acids that Luca Rana uh, recommends that you add to the drink, it becomes even more so. But even without the um, the, the supplement that Luca Rana recommends, which I have in the pantry and I'll show to you, it contains all the essential amino acids and it, it is fantastic for building a muscle. I do recommend that you check out his line and I am not, I, I don't work for Lou and I'm not sponsored this video, it's just me sharing what I take. I take a lot of his products, I take the enzymes, I take the um, probiotics, I take, I've taken his uh, protein powder that sometimes I use, I use it maybe twice a week. And I, so I'm a big believer in Luke Corona. I just recently went uh, to an event that he did and the man looks amazing and he's 70 years old. He's extraordinarily youthful, very strong. I just, it's just, it's just a testament to the lifestyle that he follows. And so one of the recipes that have really captivated me over the years that I do here and there, but lately I've been doing more of is Gorilla Milk. And this is my version of Gorilla Milk. And so there are two parts for, to this to this delicious drink that is is very rebuilding is what I'm trying to say. It's very rebuilding, and like I said, some of you are stuck in detox mode, and you could, you're going to be there for years. But it gets to a point where after you've done a quite a little bit of you know cleansing, it's time to rebuild. And so. Um, I believe in a little bit higher protein if you're working out. I believe in a little bit maybe higher fat, not necessarily a, a ton of fat, but maybe 10% never did work for me, I must be honest. And I believe in a little bit less fruit. I just believe in a little bit more balance. And I think that's how you're going to thrive in the lifestyle, especially if you're of a certain age. I'm 50 and maybe what I eat now certainly is very different than what I ate a few years ago before raw and when I started raw it, this is a lot more different too. I ate a lot more fruit and I 
I don't know, I feel like I'm in a very good place and I want to share that. I want to share that with you guys. I have found a, a great balance that works for me. And that is not to say that it might, you know, that it will work for you. Everybody's different and everybody has different priorities and different lifestyles and different places they live. And so here I just want to stress that I'm sharing what I do for me that works for me. I never want people to think, well, she's doing that. I must be doing that. I must be doing something wrong. No, I'm just, you know, it's taken me a while to get here. It's been five years of trial and error. I have to be honest. It wasn't always smooth sailing. Obviously at the beginning, you're going to do amazing no matter what, because you were eating this you know, crappy cooked diet, and I'm sorry, it, you know, a lot of the food we eat cooked, it's crap. And so you go on to fruit or you go on to raw vegan, you're gonna obviously do very, very, very well at the beginning. But I'm more interested in the, the lifestyle as it pertains to longevity on it. I don't wanna be one of those fly by, gone by raw vegans that did it for a few years and then guess what, they stopped thriving or they stopped, they stopped seeing the benefit of it. And that happens quite a lot, people, try they do amazing of course because if you're just eating such a pure diet from what you were eating yeah you're going to do amazing but then they stop thriving and so that concerns me and i never want to stop thriving i never want to get to the point where i'm like is this even worth it so i'm going to share with you the gorilla milk recipe and how i do it. and i think it's important to know that this is a little bit more involved but you don't it doesn't have to be it could be as simple as you already have your your milk done and then you 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 make your juice so um another little side little note about the juicer that i have i have a very good juicer it is the norwalk juicer and it's right behind me and it's a it's a gem of a juicer but i don't want you to get discouraged if you don't happen to have a, a, a norwalk juicer and you have the jack Leland, which is how i started my point is get the juicer that you can afford and just use it it doesn't matter what it is the best juicer is the one you use so i'm going to start with the recipe it is a two-part recipe the first thing is going to be making the green juice and the second part is going to be making the, the milk and then you combine them so for my juice today i'm going to use um some some celery and i'm going to make it a little extra big because i have other people here that need to drink the the gorilla milk so this is going to be um, if it were just for you, for one person, then you probably would just use one celery, one cucumber, you're going to use parsley, you're going to use cilantro, and loose recipe calls for green apple. I'm, I choose not to put any apple because I like my green juice straight up. You can add more things to this recipe, obviously. This is kind of like the basic one, but um, so I'm going to get started. Okay, so I'm back and I made my green juice and I just want to show you how much it yields. That's another great thing about the juice, right? And I want to show you what it actually looks like. I mean, look at that. Look at the pulp. I mean, to me, this is worth it. I don't know about you, but this is one of those things where, you know, I guess we all invest in what things we think that are important. But to me, getting bone dry pulp, it's, it's definitely something to consider but now for the fun part and this is where i i just love making nut milk because this nut milk lucarona's nut milk is even more delicious and more special than the other nut milks that i sometimes make obviously one of the key ingredients is one of these coconuts and there is some controversy with these coconuts because some people believe that these are not the best coconuts to have because they have they, they are imported from thailand and they are they're you know dehusked they, they take the outer shell of the coconut and then they dip them in a solution that's meant to preserve them looking white and that solution happens to have a bleach but I don't believe that any of the bleach solution gets into the coconut. And I can't see how that penetrates to the, to the milk, to the water inside. And I do use these and I get them at the Asian store because these were only $2.19 the other day at the Asian store. So I stocked up on these. They are quite a treat. And so one of the hor most horrible things about open is opening these things. And I see some people on YouTube and they get this thing and they hack it and it's just like three, one, two, three, four, and it's done. That is not the case for me. So bear with me as I attempt to open the coconut and I do it all the time. So do not be afraid for my fingers. But one thing that I do use is one of these things 
and I hack it as good as I can. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am not a professional, okay? Here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was good. Sorry. How do people make it make so so easy? I did order the Coco Jack, but just as I ordered it, they must have gone out of business. They kept my money and they never sent me the Coco Jack. But anyway, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Are you are you seeing this? I can't open it. Yeah, success. Okay, so I finally did it, and I'm sorry, I am not a professional, but I did do it. And now, this is what I'm gonna do when I get a colander in the blender. And I just wanna point this out. This is not a good coconut. The water, I don't think I'm gonna drink either. The flesh is gray inside. So I'm not comfortable eating this. Some people think it's fine. I am not going to do that. So I'm gonna to have to open another coconut because, um, you know what, I'm gonna drink this. No, I'm not. I don't like it. Oh, here we go again. This could be interesting. Let's try this again, okay? Okay, okay. So this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna put the water in here and then I'm gonna scoop the meat. And I'm not going to put a ton of it, but I am going to put at least half of the half of the flesh. This is not this is kind of like a little bit of a pain to be honest. Some people are so good at it, they make it look so easy, but I'm not one of those people. I'm not a professional. Okay, so basically take out the little wood bits and I guess I'm gonna put about a cup of coconut meat. I don't make it too, too fatty. And another thing I like to do actually is I don't always put almonds. Sometimes I put different kind of nuts because I, I believe in rotating the nuts. The other day I made it with, with uh, Brazil nuts and that was delicious, the Brazil nut one. Okay, so so far, about that much flesh and coconut water. Then we're gonna do about a cup of almonds. And these almonds have already been soaked and dehydrated. Now someone asked me the other day, what do you mean soaked and dehydrated? Isn't it just, you just soak them? Yeah, you just soak them. But in order to store them again, you then have to dehydrate them because I don't wanna have to think about my recipes 10 hours before or 24 hours before. I like to have nuts ready. And so I soak them for 24 hours. I dehydrate them. And then I can put them back in the jar and store them in my pantry so that when I need to make a recipe, the nuts have already been activated. They're already good to go. And so that's why when I say soaked and dehydrated, no, you don't have to dehydrate them. You just have to soak them. But these are really good. Another thing about, mm, almonds is that most of them actually all of them in the united states have been unfortunately they have been pasteurized they call it flash pasteurized but nevertheless they've killed them so when you order almonds online you have to be sure that you order them from europe or you order them from very specific places in california that are sort of operated under the radar where you can order them unpasteurized or you can go pick them up yourself which is what i do now so that's the one tricky thing about almonds. They are flash pasteurized, which is such a shame. That's the only nut that gets flash pasteurized when they're sold as raw, which they're not really. Then I'm gonna put one cup of almonds in here. And I think it could use a little bit more coconut water. So I'm gonna add a little bit more coconut water. Cause I don't think that coconut had a lot of water. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Hang with me. Yes. Okay. I'm just gonna add a little bit. 
because I'm making a, a, a little extra runnier because my kids will have, you know, just let me put the whole thing. Okay, so make this milk at your <laughs> discretion. The first coconut didn't have all that much milk uh, water in it, so now this is more like it. Okay, so one cup of coconut flesh, one cup of almonds, and about that much water. I wanted to show you this. This is Life Essentials. This is what um, Lou Corona puts in his, in his Gorilla Milk, and I am gonna put some of it, actually, because I thought about it later. I'm like, you know, let me just do a little bit of Life Essentials. You can use this also in the coconut yogurt that he has, the coconut yogurt recipe. You can put this in smoothies. It's just another layer of nutrition that you can add to your lifestyle, to your diet. Why not make this gorilla milk extraordinary? One and two. Okay, so then you're gonna blend your milk. Here we go. And what you're left with is an amazing concoction. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it through the nut milk bag so that you take the pulp out, you know, you make it a little bit lighter. Because some people drink it like this. I just think it's too much. I mean, honestly, this is... It's amazing, but that is a little much. So I definitely recommend putting it through the uh, nut milk bag, okay? Get a good nut milk bag. I was just saying on my last video how important a good nut milk bag is. I had... I have had some that are just terrible and they let a lot of the pulp through and some that don't let it enough and you're squeezing to death and, it, and this actually is a very good one and I'm really happy with it. So squeeze the milk. I mean, you know what you can do also with the pulp that stays behind, you can make cookies. And I made enough for just, well, I think I just made enough for two Gorilla Milks, three Gorilla Milks because I'm gonna have one for myself, and then I'm gonna make enough for my kids. My husband's out of town, so he's missing out. I think that's it. So, what a mess, I'm sorry. It, see what I mean about not being professional? Some people, when they make these videos, their kitchen looks so nice. Anyway, okay, so now I'm gonna get a I'm going to show you the proportion that I use. Lou Corona makes it 50-50, so he makes 50% juice and he makes 50% milk, but I don't like it that fatty. I think that probably 75-25 works really, really well for me. So this is the amount that I'm going to be drinking. So I'm going to do my green juice first. About that much. So that's, yeah, maybe a good 75%, and I'm gonna put the Gorilla Milk in there. Oh my gosh. How amazing does that look? This right here, come on. That's the stuff dreams are made of, for me anyway. It's truly, I mean, if someone said to me, what what would you like to drink for the rest of your life? I would have to say Gorilla Milk. It's so creamy. And I didn't make it as fatty as Lou makes it, because like I said, he makes 50% juice and 50% milk. To me, this is the perfect proportion. Buy the coconuts at the Asian supermarket and get yourself some Gorilla Milk, because I'm telling you, this is how you rebuild. This is how you come and you start putting a little bit of weight on if you've lost a lot of weight. This is how you build muscle. This is how you thrive, basically. This is how you thrive on the lifestyle, in my opinion. I'm just sharing what I do. So thank you very much for watching this video. Mm. This is truly delicious, I'm sorry. I hope you make yourself some Gorilla Milk. Thank you for sticking through to the end. I know it's a mess. I know I'm not a professional. Don't leave mean comments. I love you guys. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.